Uh, here's George getting measured uh, for his EEG, his brainwave test. Uh, this is actually Elvie's EEG. Um, we see two things here. You'll see this, uh, what we call low voltage fast activity, beta activity. This can appear with any sedative medication. I don't think anybody who's talked to Elvie thinks that she's sedated by her medicine. It is also a finding that's found in heavy thinkers, and it may be that its appearance on EEGs of cannabis smokers represents heavy thought. Um, LV did have a minor abnormality uh, right here. That's a phase reversing sharp wave in the left frontal area, but it, uh, that happens in 6% of patients. There have been similar incidents of findings in previous EEG studies, such as were done in Jamaica, but it's not attributable to cannabis. Uh, this happens in 6% of patients. LV has never had seizures, and it's just one of those things. Uh, this is George's EEG, and it really has a nice uh, alpha rhythm. Uh, again, some low voltage fast activity because he's a heavy thinker too. Uh, looking at the neurophysiology again, uh, patients A to C had low voltage fast activity. Patient A had the uh, left frontal sharp wave activity with rare slowing. Uh, patients A to C had normal P300s, and all, there are no attributable changes of cannabis uh, to the neurophysiological tests. Pulmonary issues. Here's George giving us all uh, in the pulmonary function lab. Uh, we saw in three of the patients that there was a slight increase in the FVC. That's the forced vital capacity, basically a measure of how big a breath can you take. Um, the FEV1 is a key measure. It's the forced expiratory volume in one second. How much breath can you push out rapidly? And you see that there were some slight decreases. And this is just a ratio that's used to gauge these things too. Uh, interpretation uh, for LV was a mild obstructive defect. George uh, had uh, results within normal limits, uh, maybe a slightly prolonged expiratory phase. Urban had a moderate obstructive defect, and our patient D, no obstructive defect. Bear in mind that uh, patients A and C have connective tissue diseases, and there certainly may be effects from those. Um, additionally, uh, as we'll discuss a little bit more, um, Urban was smoking the greatest amount of the weakest material, and when you see what it looks like, you may have some insight into the problem. <laughs> we know from a recent study by Dr. Tashkin and his group at UCLA that normally there isn't a decline in the FEV1 uh, in chronic cannabis smoking. What this means is, unlike in tobacco-only smokers where there is a decline in the development of emphysema, this is not what is usually seen in chronic cannabis use. So here, again, we have a divergence from what's reported, and we have to look for alternative explanations. Chest x-ray. Well, an interesting thing happened on the way to the results. Basically, we did the testing, amazingly, all in two days, a Thursday and Friday a year ago. I think it was a year ago today, yeah. right? Uh, in any event, um, by Saturday we were done. Uh, we had everybody out to my house to relax. And on Monday, I started looking at the results. And I remember calling radiology uh, to get the recording of the chest x-rays and they reported uh, for Urban that he uh, had a pulmonary nodule, probable carcinoma. And I remember thinking, oh my God, I'm gonna go down in history as the first researcher to identify uh, pulmonary carcinoma in a cannabis-only smoker because it has never happened, okay? I didn't believe it. Um, I'm going to skip the next one. That's yours, George. It's perfectly clear. Irvin's uh, lateral, uh, and you know, I said, I bet that they've made a mistake. So I got the x-ray, found what they were talking about, and it looked to me like it was in the third rib and not in the lung. 
because we could see it on the um, lateral and uh, the uh, PA chest. This is what we're talking about, a little bit subtle, but this is actually an outgrowth of the third rib. Um, I remember calling Urban up back in Florida, uh, telling him the news, telling him what I thought. We uh, got a CAT scan done, and fortunately it confirmed that the mass was uh, in a rib and part of his disease, and his lungs were clear. Mm -hmm. I should mention that although Urban has had a modest decrease in pulmonary function, he had a bronchoscopy done a few years ago, and there was no evidence of any cytological change. Uh, some minimal irritation, but no evidence of cancerous or precancerous histology. So, basically, on patients A to C, there were no attributable radiographic changes, and we had this furious uh, pulmonary nodule. We had a slight downward trend in the FEV1 and the FEV1 to FVC ratios. Uh, there was a slight increase in the FVC in three patients. It uh, should be mentioned that patients A, B, and D uh, smoked tobacco uh, then. Elvis dropped out of that list. Good for her. This one should say patient uh, C. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, this is urban. Cannabis only, greatest amount smoked, uh, the most changes, but it could well be due to his underlying connective tissue disease. We took a lot of blood from the patients, and I've got to uh, tip my hat to George here. George had been subjected to countless blood tests over countless years and really didn't want to do this. But the last uh, day, at the last available hour, he agreed so we could have a full data set. We uh, wanted to look at immune function and uh, on blood counts, essentially, patients A, C, and D were within normal limits. I didn't put it here because it wasn't significant enough, but George probably got a little excited by his blood drawing and his white blood count was a little elevated. Um, he also had a touch of polycythemia, meaning that a few more red cells uh, elevated hematocrit, um, probably due to his uh, tobacco smoking. More importantly, we wanted to look at immune function, and the absolute lymphocyte counts were all within normal limits. Uh, we looked at CD4 counts. This is one of the immunologic parameters that's uh, examined in patients with AIDS. If you have below um, uh, 500 of these, you're subject to uh, unusual infections, but these values were all normal in each case. As I mentioned, we looked at an extensive uh, set of endocrinological tests. FSH, LH, prolactin, estradiol, estro estrone, estrogen, testosterone, and progesterone, because if you looked at any of those parameters, you'd find literature somewhere that claimed that it was too high uh, in men, or too low in women, or whatever. But I'm pleased to say that on all these tests, every value in every patient was normal. We had two men, one uh, premenopausal woman, one postmenopausal woman, but all within normal limits. To basically uh, reiterate a point made by Zimmer and Morgan in Marijuana Myths, Marijuana Facts, uh, this remains true today as it was four years ago when it, they wrote it, there is no scientific evidence that marijuana delays adolescent sexual development, has a feminizing effect on males, or a masculinizing effect on females. Well, I'm Ethan Russo. Um, I am the 